All right, Chris, you were there at Twickenham. What a bizarre game. I mean, if the game ended at 70 minutes, we would have just been heralding a fantastic all-black performance. The last 10 minutes, we were absolutely hopeless. England scored three tries. And in the end, Marcus Smith kicks it out when, you know, there was at least one more play. I mean, explain it all. It was even Mario Toji said that was a weird one. And it was because... But, but then this is what we've been talked all year about with the All Blacks, isn't it? 70 minutes of tactical superb you know containment of england exploiting the kicks wide to the shorter wings not bringing Stewart into the game because you don't kick deep it was it was brilliant and and the guys followed the game plan superbly when the drop got over you thought well that's been a bit of a beating isn't it? england will have to do well to come back from this at any point during the next 12 months but to come back in the next eight minutes thanks to Bowden giving away a yellow card i mean that was that, that wasn't just a, a, a yellow card it was a jet get out of jail card for england and uh, the three tries kept coming and i can't believe i was watching an all black team that couldn't handle the fact they were down to 14 men we know and they come on your show and told you they practice going down to, to 14 13 men and what to do and they absolutely fell apart it was beyond belief and what was even more beyond belief <laughs> is when they then gave England the ball in the final minute, they kicked it out because it, the way, and everybody's pointed this out, the England mentality at the moment is, crikey, we've got a draw with the All Blacks. We'll take that. Not, we should have won the game, which is what Fozzie was on about afterwards, although I'm not quite sure that your players were in any shape to win a game in the last minute of that match. They were just shambles. It's happened before. It happened in Melbourne. We had a big handy lead, remember, against Australia. Uh, then just really, for whatever reason, just seemed to do exactly the same thing. Couldn't find a pass. Uh, all the options taken were wrong. Uh, they actually snuck into the lead. And Bernard Foley, thanks to his brain fade and a, and a, and a very efficient refereeing performance from Raynal, and then all of a sudden, OK, we got out of jail. So, you know, this season, I'm kind of looking at it, Chris, and the, the first thing that struck me after that final whistle went, I thought... You know, this is actually quite a good result for the All Blacks because it's a reminder that not as you know all is well. I gave us a B minus after the the Australian test at Eden Park, thinking, okay, yeah, scratchy patchy. I'll give us a B minus, and I haven't changed from that because that draw in at at uh, Twickenham and the way we lost it in that last ten minutes says that we still have a heck of a lot of stuff to sort out before next year. And that was the thing that that, that Ian Foster gave us in the press conference afterwards is is that. That that last ten minutes, he thinks in eight months' time will, will will prove to be a really important period because whatever they thought they were doing as a team, and he was really pleased with that first seventy minutes. Unfortunately, the game lasts for eighty, and you can lose an awful lot in a few minutes. And the way they lost those three tries, the way they allowed England to get onto the front foot for the very first time in the match, and a, a lot of it went down to the bench. England brought on their players like Macavinapola. And, and, and ribbons came on and they made a big difference while the all black bench was quite passive uh, in, in comparison and that surprised me a lot as well because we talk about 23 man game and it is these days with the intensity you play at but for england's bench to to outshine the all black bench again is a worrying moment for the all blacks and yeah they finished the year you're right probably b minus would be good england would, would, would probably scrape a c plus maybe a B just because they managed to actually get a draw with you guys. But you know, there's an awful lot more work for Eddie Jones to do, but you couldn't have told that in the press conference afterwards because of course he was beaming. His team has just dug himself out of a massive hole. And to be fair to, to Eddie, he did say, I've been in charge of teams who have been pulverized by the all blacks for 70 minutes and conceded 40 or 50 points. And in truth, that should have been the case yesterday. Chris Jones, Times, Times Online, RugbyPath.com. We've got so much to talk about with this All Blacks game. And, and you know, again, clearing the benches. We, and we, we, that's when we kind of lost all our momentum. I know that this is the way they coach these days and you're meant to bring on eight separate players and things. But we're also, if you, if you recall, down to 14 in Johannesburg for the last about 14 minutes when Barrett got sent from the field then. So we should know how to close a game because we managed to do it then. But, yeah, really worrying signs, isn't there, that that there was no one on that field for the All Blacks who was able to take a grip. You know, there's so many leaders out there who've played a lot of test matches who, who who wasn't able to actually get those players together and say, listen, calm down. All we've got to do is get hold of the ball, few phases, run the clock down a little bit like in the NFL, and then this game is over. And then you get the most one of the most experienced players. We've got TJ Pedernada. For whatever brain fade reason, he kicks it away with two minutes to go. And I'm sitting there thinking, 
mate, you're on the field to shut this thing down. I mean, I'm not blaming just him, but I mean, that was the mentality. Well, what's, we, what's really worrying, Marty, is the fact that we asked Sam Whitelock to explain what he was saying to the guys, particularly after that third try. And he was saying all the things you just said. So either the players weren't listening or they just couldn't do the most basic things, which is what he wanted them to do, which is to play sensible rugby, make sure your handling's spot on, do not give away the ball, you know, and tie this game down. And what do they go and do? They kick the ball away and play like headless chickens. So, yeah, White Block in the debrief is going to have to look his men in the eye and say, what do you think I was saying? Could you not understand my English? Because it was just so plain and obvious what he wanted them to do, and they didn't do it. And that is a really worrying position. So, again, it comes down to leadership, as you said. You know, is Are there really that core of leadership uh, players within this squad, which they talk about as, as, as having? I didn't see that in the last 10 minutes. I just saw a team that was basically hitting and hoping and falling apart in the most classic of areas, which is just go wide, wide and be exposed. Now, they were only down to 14. They weren't down like Argentina, down to 13 men and 12 men as they were against Scotland. And they even scored a try during that period. It was just 14 men. That is not difficult in the current situation to defend with just 14 when you spend an awful lot of time in the week doing just that. That is what the most perplexing thing about this is. And, you know, that debrief before they went back would have been really hard watching because some of those guys, you know, they went missing at the most important time of the year for the All Blacks. It would have been fantastic to go into the next year, a World Cup year, having stuck 30 or 40 points on England. Yeah, That's what you should be talking about now, and you're not. Yeah, exactly. All right. France, Japan, we knew what was going to happen there. Uh, Scotland, Argentina, it blew out, and the Argentinians, again, discipline problems. No, you're not going to get, you're not going to get past France that quickly, Marty. You, you realise they're only the second team ever to go a perfect year. Uh, last time uh, it was England 23rd. in 2016. Oh, okay. New Zealand, New Zealand in 2013. Okay. All they right. played 13 games, won them all, they are the best team. I know Ireland say, as the world number one, they are the best team. But I tell you, this French team, without Dupont, have just gone 13 games unbeaten. And you know what? They've beaten every other team ranked in the top 10 this year. That is some team, some performance, and they're hosting the World Cup, mate. Well, hang on a second. Did we play them? No, we played them at the end of last year and got beat, didn't we? So does that kind of count? That doesn't count in this calendar year, but... <laughs> No. All right. Well, let's look at South Africa over Italy. That's just a wipe. There are two other games I need to talk about here. Um, one of them is Ireland do win again. But this is an Australian side that every week we keep saying, oh, they were close. Oh, they should have. I mean, it's just it's just the script with Australia, isn't it? That one week they're absolutely hopeless. The next week they, they almost look like they could beat anybody in the world. And they just about knobbed Ireland. Yes. And, and they finish up with four or five serious injuries. So they're going to turn up against Wales with half a team and probably end up with with a loss against a, a team which has uh, just become the joke of British of British and Irish rugby. Uh, we'll, I'm sure, come to Georgia in a minute. But, you know, the Australians are really in, in trouble because they don't have the strength to mount a serious World Cup campaign because we're seeing that in terms of the sort of injuries getting and how it's expo- exposing them in certain areas. And there's been an aspect of that match which is really worrying, Marty, and that is the abuse Ben O'Keefe uh, has been reporting, having received after officiating the 13-10 win for Ireland. He's posted uh, online a number of the appalling messages he's received, the abuse he's received. And this comes just shortly after Rassi Erasmus has had his two-week uh, ban for his appalling uh, uh, exploitation of, of social media to attack referees yet again. And, you know, that is overshadowing Ireland's uh, win, which, which confirms them, you know, number one. But, yeah, it wasn't a great performance by Ireland. And certainly if some of their fans have been involved in the sort of abuse that Ben O'Keefe's received, then they should hang their heads in shame. This is an aspect of rugby that we have to, everyone has to be very, very concerned about because we're going to drive good referees out this game if, if they're getting this sort of abuse, vile abuse on a weekly basis. Mm, no, it's very easy. Uh, to me, it's ex- extremely easy to solve, Chris, and I don't understand why Facebook, I don't understand why Twitter, I don't understand why all these idiotic companies don't do it. It's very simple. The only way you can open an account is with either a passport or a valid driver's license. You must be able to produce a photo. It's like anything else. If you sign up, you have to use your real name. We have to know where you work. The abuse stops today. It's as simple as that. 
No one is going Absolutely. to get on there because it's Absolutely, all just mate. anonymous yeah. trolls is what it is. You know, Kylie Bunny 13, all of these people with several or 19, like Kevin Durant, 50 different catfish, uh, you know, names, addresses and things. That's how you solve it. It's that simple. Who are you? Where do you work? Because you're not dishing abuse if it comes back to your house of employment where your boss says, hang on a second, you reckon a customer base. I mean, I just honestly, that's a rubber stamp job. Let's go to Wales versus Georgia finally. And Georgia's saying do that. You look, to, do well, you have Chris, to? Do you have to, honestly? Georgia, Georgia have beaten Italy. <laughs> They've now beaten Wales in Cardiff. Does this not give them the credibility they need to say, come on, Six Nations, make it seven? Uh well, they could do if we, if we could ever get some agreement, because obviously you're asking Turkey, turkeys to vote for Christmas, as in yeah. they wouldn't have seven because it just wouldn't work as a fixture list. And also Italy are not going to give up their share of the uh, the income from the Six Nations. So this is the recurring problem. So they're talking about you know setting up all types of new competitions to allow Georgia in. But Georgia have won 11 of the 12 second division European championships. Yeah. Wales have now lost in the same year to Italy and Georgia. So quite honestly, with the shambles that is also the Welsh Rugby Union, it may be Wales who have to get relegated to uh, to let Georgia in and Italy stay. I asked you last week to finish it off. I said the top three teams in the world, and you said Ireland, France and the All Blacks. Today, the top three teams right now in world rugby are who? They are France, Ireland and, of course, Georgia. 